you suffer from hearing loss? Well, more than two thirds of Americans over 70 do. It can be caused by aging and exposure to loud noises. But now researchers have developed a new approach to repair cells deep inside the ear. It's a potential remedy that could restore hearing for millions of people who suffer hearing loss. Here to explain how it works are two of the researchers, Dr. Judith Kempfel and Dr. David Jung. They work for the Massachusetts Eye and Ear Infirmary as well as Harvard Medical school thanks to you both for joining us for the uninitiated how does this treatment work the treatment works by focusing on reconnecting neurons within the inner ear and the sensory cells or hair cells that have been disconnected uh, previous research has shown that these cells can be disconnected through noise exposure or through the aging process. And our therapy aims to reconnect the neurons and hair cells that have been disconnected to try to get them to talk to each other again. One of the new things about our technology is that it combines two aspects, the first being the therapy itself, that is the ability to uh, re uh, reconnect the neurons and the hair cells, and also the ability to anchor this activity within the inner ear itself, that is by binding to the bone of the inner ear. And I understand that part of what's revolutionary or new about this is you figured out a way to deliver this drug so that it doesn't get washed out or, or flushed away by the ear's natural cleaning process. Is that right? And, and what does that mean? Right, that's correct. So you have to imagine the inner ear, it's a very complex anatomical structure that's completely encased in bone and there's only a very small membranous opening that we can use to get the drugs across. And usually the growth factors that work to restore neurons or to regenerate and help with the hearing restoration are very big molecules that have difficulty crossing that membrane. And we've developed a very, very um, special molecule or a combination of two molecules that uh, is much smaller than the regular growth factors. Ours is an agonist for one of the growth factors uh, called BDNF. And uh, we were able to link that to a, um, a drug that's called a bisphosphonate, which is a bone binding uh, molecule. In fact, it's used very commonly in humans for osteoporosis and it acts like bone Velcro. It likes to bind to the bone and it stays there for months at a time. And mm. we combine this bone binding drug with our uh, small molecule that helps to regenerate and um, restore the neurons. And uh, because it is so small, it has the ability to much more easily cross the uh, membrane and get into this bony structure that is the inner ear, and there it can bind to the bone and stay there for a very long time. Now, your experiment was conducted on animal yeah. tissues in a, in a Petri dish, and your team writes in, in this paper that there is strong preliminary evidence that this treatment will work on living creatures. What makes you so hopeful, and what are the barriers to the next step here? Right. I mean, there are several. The first step towards establishing that this therapy might work is um, the in vitro experiments that we describe in this paper. And so in this paper, we've shown that this molecule has activity first to cause the neurons to put out new processes. Second, that that activity is maintained after the molecule is bound to bone or bone-like substance. And finally, that in a Petri dish, after damage between hair cells and neurons, that this hybrid molecule has the ability to regenerate the connections between the neurons and the hair cells. And so we still have a long ways to go before really establishing that this will work um, in an animal, but we're actively um, undertaking experiments to show that that's exactly the, that, 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 that that's the case. The demand for what you guys are doing is huge. The, the number of people who could benefit from this is, is well into the millions. How soon until it's readily available? I know you have to go through many testing phases before then. And how much is something like this likely to cost someone? Um, those are really good questions. Uh, you smile at each other like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. know. Outside the scope <laughs> of our experience, um, but that, that really would be more in the context of a, of a, of a, of a, of a biotech company. But um, right, so the first thing to do would be to establish that this works in animals um, after noise damage, 
Um, and then, you know, potentially look at larger animals. Our experiments, our initial experiments will be in mice. And then to potentially move on from there to human clinical trials. But we are quite some way uh, away from that point. Uh, but with hopefully with the application of the right uh, tools, we'll be able to get there. So eventually it's going to be very easy to apply that in a human once we've established that it's safe. Um, because it could be a procedure that could be done in office through the ear canal going through the middle ear and bringing it right to this membrane that connects the middle ear to the inner ear. So that in itself would be a quick and fairly safe procedure. Well, there could be a day where you can go to the doctor's office and have your hearing issues fixed um, in, in one visit. It's incredible work and wonderful that both of you are, are efforting this uh, for so many people who suffer hearing issues. Doctors David Jung and Judith Kempfel, thanks for your time today. Thank Thank, you. Thanks so much for having us. Appreciate it.